Hi everyone, I'm here with Max Walker, who is going to be performing on the next Vermilion First Thursday series. We're here to talk about what he is doing. Max, what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> well, I'll be playing um, some of my original music with a, with a trio, so it's a just classic guitar trio, electric guitar, electric bass, and drums, um, and that's with Remy Morick on the drums and Tim Carey on the bass, which I'm super excited about. I mean, I really love playing with those guys. Um, Have you played with them a lot? Yeah, yeah. And we've played together in a lot of different contexts. Uh, we've done now um, two shows with this trio. Um, and, you know, the first time we played together, we were just playing mostly standards. We played a few of my tunes. Um, and then this last, this past show that we did was the first time that we really, you know, I put a set list together, almost entirely originals, and um, we played them together. And it was just really exciting, especially because a lot of our, um, you know, taste, is, you know, a lot of our tastes are similar. We're playing a lot of stuff that's sort of just a mishmash of all my different influences. A lot of um, stuff influenced by guitar players like Tim Miller, Holdsworth. Then also a lot of my influences from Irish traditional music and the music that I've grown up with. You know. huh. Did you grow up in Ireland? I didn't grow up in Ireland, but I grew up with Irish parents. And oh, okay. So, so you it was always it was, a, it was always a very big part of my childhood. Oh, growing interesting. Up. How how does that influence your music? Well, you know, it's interesting because I, I know that like well back in college I had this whole plan of like really incorporating it into my music and. I was always struggling to do it justice. It always mm. felt really contrived. I went over to Ireland and I studied there for a year and I remember trying to write all this sort of like Irish traditional jazz music. And it all, yeah, it always sort of just didn't feel quite right. Um, and so recently I've sort of been just trying to write things that I like, melodic things that I like and put them into the context that I'm familiar with. And I've been noticing those influences afterwards. You know, and so a lot of the ways that I write melodies, I can pick up on them, like, like, you know, sort of just how those Irish influences are working their ways into those melodies. So kind of after the fact. Exactly, yeah. 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 That's interesting. That That's right in line with something that's coming up more and more in like my own teaching mm -hmm. about uh, when students are frustrated that whatever they're working on doesn't appear in their playing. Yeah. And, and, and more people, more musicians I talk to, it's like, well, if it ever does appear, it's going to appear months later, totally. and in a way that you don't, never would have expected. Exactly. It sounds yeah. exactly the same thing. You never want to force it. Yeah. yeah. You want it to have sort of happen naturally, you know, and just a lot of exposure to that thing is the only way to sort of really achieve that. Alan Holdsworth's trio settings were just like so full of raw intensity that I liked a lot. On top of that, I just really like that approach to trio, guitar trio, because they're, you know, I mean, the piano trio is so solidified. I think I'm just excited to play this show and, and uh, you know, really excited to share this music with people. Okay. Well, looking forward to hearing it. Once again, this is Max Walker, and he's going to be performing at Vermilion First Thursday on um, June, what did I say it was? Six. Six. June 6th, right? So uh, check it out. Thanks for watching. In the past, like a lot of the earlier tunes I wrote were very much, um, you know, written away from the guitar, and written like, maybe on piano or maybe just with a theoretical concept in mind, you know. But a lot of the music that I'll play at this show is going to be music that, you know, I, I wrote at the guitar. Mm -hmm. And that I wrote really mostly just thinking about making good songs, you know, just things that I would like. You know, there was much less, much less of the academic brain involved and a lot more of just, you know, using my ear and writing things that I liked. One of the things I've been doing or thinking about is um, trying to write these melodies very lyrically without thinking about time at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I initially thought of that listening to a lot of these um, Irish ballads, these old Irish ballads. Like specifically, um, there's a group called Day Dan, and it was like a you know all star band out of Ireland playing traditional music. And they did a lot of these pieces where they would have a singer come in and they would sing in Gaelic, and you could tell that they were they were they had 
they had tones that they were putting to these words and they were they were singing but they weren't rhythmic they were just talking they weren't thinking about rhythm at all but there was an entire band playing behind them that was following their speech patterns so yeah it was just really interesting to hear because they would end up doing all these crazy rhythms and all these really interesting modulations because of it but it was never you know they were never doing these modulations for the sake of doing cool rhythmic modulations right. they were doing it to service the speaker the way that their language sort of rhythmically oh, showed up huh so when, when you say not thinking about the rhythm you're th- I, I imagine you're, you're thinking more about like not thinking about the meter I suppose that, so yeah yeah okay. not, it's sort of just a long form writing a long melody thinking more about how I would want to say the melody rhythmically how I would speak it okay and then after the fact I go through and, I'm, and I'll say like oh well that's a measure of 3-4 that's a measure of 7-8 and so on you analyze it later analyze it yeah. later but it I mean, like, as opposed to, like, some of the things that I may have written in music school when I was really trying to, like, excite, all these meters were new to me, and I was like, oh, I'm going to put a, you know, modulation of 7-8 here because it would be so hip, right. but then it just sounds forced, you know, like, in this case, it doesn't sound forced, because right. it's what the melody is. Yeah, right, right. It services the melody. Interesting. You know, I went through a huge phase over a few years where I was just obsessed with all of these, like, fusion bands from, like, the 70s and 80s and 90s, like, Things, some of them very cheesy, but just in the best possible way. Like mm-hmm. groups like mm-hmm. Tribal Tech and um, Chicory Electric Band and yeah. Weather Report. And um, well, somebody that really stood out to me among all of them was Alan Holdsworth, mm-hmm. um, who's an English guitar player um, that's just influenced me a lot just in his approach to mainly harmony. I've found his harmonic language to be just really fascinating a lot of his approaches to playing the guitar um, are very different than a lot of other guitar players I always thought sort of he plays guitar almost more like a piano Hmm. you know like he's playing finger style he's playing these block chords very rarely strumming Um, a lot of his voicings are very spread in the sense that he'll be playing maybe a couple notes on very high strings and then plucking a low string Hmm. very um, like at the bottom of his register. Like a pedal point kind of thing? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. And so, um, also, um, a lot of the chord scales that he use, uses come from very strange places. He uses a lot of odd scales, like harmonic major, mm-hmm. double harmonic major, things like that. Double harmonic major. Double harmonic major. Harmonic major. It's a harmonic major <laughs> scale with a flat second degree. Okay. okay um, gotcha. And it's just a very interesting color palette and so I've definitely been very influenced by him